sometimes when you're installing Ubuntu or a derivative of Ubuntu, it'll fail to recognize the other operating system or systems that you have on your computer. So what can you do? Well, this is where you need to use the something else option. This is the manual partitioner. So let me go to continue and I'll show you how to use this. Now here's where it's going to be a bit vague as to what you might have on your system. So currently I have five partitions on this hard drive. A 105 meg SDA1 in NTFS format, that is going to be the Windows bootloader. SDA2 NTFS, that will be the Windows C drive. Now you could go back to Windows Explorer and confirm that is indeed the size that you have on your system. Now I have SDA5, which is extension 4. What could that be? Oh, well, I installed Ubuntu on here earlier. We have a Linux swap. Ooh, fairly self-explanatory. And SDA3 NTFS. Now what is that at 500 meg? Well, that could be a recovery partition. Now if that's a true recovery partition, it will be considerably larger than that normally in the region of about 5 to 10 gigabytes. This is all very confusing. What are we going to do? Now to start with, I'm going to get rid of the old operating system here. So I'm going to click the minus button, which will be delete. Click the minus button again here. So delete that. Now if I wanted to resize the Windows partition, I've got the option here, so I can go to change. And we'll make it, uh, let's see, one, let's make it 40, one, two, three, 40,000 megabytes. That is going to be a bit on the low side for Windows. Normally you'd want to leave about 10 to 15 gig spare on that drive. Uh, use as, so I'm going to keep it the same. We'll keep it as an NTFS journaling file system. That is the equivalent of the C drive. You'd don't select anything here, we don't want to format it, we don't have a mount point. That'll shrink that drive considerably. Okay, continue. Okay, now it's finished resizing, I'll create the new drive for Ubuntu. So I click on the free space and then click plus. So we want a new logical drive at the beginning of this space. So I've got 281 gigabytes spare. I will need to leave a few gigabytes spare for the swap partition, which is an area of the hard drive that gets used when you run out of memory, run out of RAM. Normally you want to leave an equivalent in terms of the amount of memory you have in your system. So if you have a four gig of RAM, then you want a four gig swap partition. If you have eight gig of RAM, you want an eight gig swap partition. Although if you've got something like 16 or 32 gig of RAM, then you don't necessarily have to go quite so overboard in terms of swap partition space. Uh, so anyway, four gig of RAM on this system. So uh, we want 277000 megabytes. Use as. Extension for journaling file system is generally what is recommended for Linux. The other choice is BTree file system, BTRFS. Both are good choices. They Each one has advantages and disadvantages over the other, but generally EXT4 has been around a bit longer and is a bit more reliable. So mount point. This is crucial now. We want a mount point of forward slash. If you wanted to put your documents in a separate partition, that will be the slash home. I'm just keeping it simple here. I just want to give you the idea of what to do. So mount point forward slash. Now with this free space, click add. And use as a swap area. So those are the two minimum items that you need to install a Linux operating system. You need a mount point of forward slash and a swap area. And the last question we have here is the device for the bootloader installation. Slash dev slash SDA is the first hard drive of the system and it just installs it basically at the, at the beginning of the hard drive. 
Yeah, that's correct. You'd only change that if you have multiple hard drives on your system. So that's all good. Click Install Now. Right, no mount point is assigned for the NTFS file system. That is correct. Ubuntu does not use that file system. So, continue. So, the following changes will be made. Yes, continue. So that's how you use the manual partitioner in an Ubuntu installer. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.